Hey, it's good to be with you again today. And uh, I'm excited about revival. I believe that we're living in the end time. And uh, it's time for an end time revival. Gathering, harvest, backsliders coming to God. We're seeing people stirred like they've not been stirred in perhaps 20 or 30 years. And uh, I realize that I'm speaking these days to people who uh, it has been quite a time since you really committed any aspect of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the days of the glory of God. You remember what it was to feel the touch and the power of the Holy Ghost, but that has long since gone. Could I encourage you right now, while the Spirit is dealing with you, you know your life's out of step with God it's a good time to get right with God. Hi, I'm Carlton Kuhn, along with Dwayne Butler, our pastor Calvary. We are a United Pentecostal Church here in Springfield, Missouri. It's a great time for our church. We're preparing to move into a facility that will be new to us, and we're just days away now from uh, signing that contract and all of that proceeding and moving forward. And the work is being done already on the property, at least on the outside. And uh, again, to God be the glory. More important, home Bible studies are being taught. People are receiving the Holy Ghost. We have new interest. And I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in the next while. If you would, again today, if you will share, if you will start a watch party, if you'll make a comment, anything that you can do to use this means for evangelism, we'll be uh, doing uh, God's work a favor and a benefit I believe. Acts chapter 2, hinge chapter, start of the New Testament church, the presentation for the very first time and declaration regarding the resurrection of Christ to a group outside of his close followers, an explanation of uh, the Holy Ghost as being the fulfillment of the prophet Joel, and uh, then a message that gives the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, places a responsibility upon those who were listening to Peter on this particular day. If you've not been watching or listening, all of this is available on YouTube. You might want to subscribe to Calvary's YouTube channel or to my own and uh, just plug in, see uh, what's going on. This will be an extensive array of... Uh, video material by the time I get through. In some ways it already is, uh, but I am being blessed myself by teaching. If you have a question, please do as others have done. Share that question. Send it my direction. Um, I'll do my best to answer. There are some things where I'll say I don't know or will direct you to some other uh, literature or resource that you can read and dig through for yourself. Uh, God's doing a great work, and in, in these days, there are people that are hungry for God. Uh, just this week, someone asked, are you open for business? And yes, the church is open for business. Where we're dealing with right now is a important verse of Scripture. It is inspired of God, no less inspired than the book of Romans or Ephesians or Galatians or Genesis no more inspired than Genesis, Ephesians, Romans, Galatians, or Matthew. The particular part that we're dealing with is where Peter has come to the end of his preaching. And as I've said before, maybe it was not the end of his preaching because with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this underworld generation. We'll deal with that a little bit later. But he either hits a pause or there is an interruption when he says, and God has made this same Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. At least some of the audience standing in front of him were pierced to their heart. It was like a knife cut. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter has a answer ready for them. He doesn't 
leave them hanging with the question, but he gives them some specifics. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yesterday we spent uh, quite a bit of time talking about repentance, and it is a uh, it's an excellent subject for consideration. It is important to salvation. It is essential to salvation. In answer to their question, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter has given more than just repent. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Uh, one translation of every one of you says, let each one of you be baptized. He's still answering the question, what shall we do? What shall we do? So, to Peter, this matter of baptism was an opportunity, a positive opportunity, for his audience to take action beyond their sin of having participated in the crucifixion of the Lord of glory. I have taught here online quite a bit about baptism, so I'm not going to readdress that, but instead what I want you to do is I'd like for you to look up the word baptize or baptism or be baptized, any of those words surrounding baptism. Look them up in the book of Acts and also in the epistles from the book of Romans to the book of Jude. And write down a list of all of the things that happen when someone is baptized. All of the things that are the result of being baptized. Uh, in my opinion, you doing that work will give you a sense of the significance of baptism. So, Let's look at this. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Okay, from a historical perspective, and from a theological, well, from a historical perspective, Peter is taking his audience back back to something that had happened during the ministry of John. Now, baptism was not something that was brand new when the New Testament church started. If someone who was a follower of some other religion came and decided they wanted to be a Jew, they became a Jewish proselyte. And as a Jewish proselyte, they were baptized as part of this process of them having made a declaration regarding their desire to be a member of the Judaism. This preceded John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. This had been around for a long time. Jesus had made reference to baptism. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But for the most part, from the time of John the Baptist until now, the premise of baptism associated with the work of the Lord Jesus Christ was kind of lying dormant. And what Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, was a looking forward to what was now transpiring or what was about to transpire here on the day of Pentecost. So that's history. From a theological perspective, 
with the word baptized, Peter is again taking this audience back to the work of John the Baptist and to his preaching four or five years earlier. He had baptized unto repentance. In other words, John preached vehemently against sin and against unrighteousness. People came from Jerusalem to see this wild man preaching out in the wilderness, and he baptized them because they had repented. It was in the Jordan River. Jesus had John baptize him as an emblem, perhaps, of obedience. All of this has happened four years earlier. Baptism of Christ would have been three and a half, a little over three and a half years before that. It is in this process of time that John the Baptist pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It's in John 1, 29. Christ, the Messiah. Now track with me. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Who's he pointing to? He's pointing to Christ. He is pointing to the Messiah. He's pointing to the one who Andrew had told his brother Peter, come see the Christ, come see the Messiah. We have found him. So he is pointing to Christ. Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, was God's lamb. Jesus, the eternal God, needed no sacrifice for his own sin, neither as the eternal God nor as God manifest in the flesh. The lamb was needed because that this God, this eternal God who had created man in his own likeness and image had decided before foundation of the earth he foreknew and predestined what was going to happen. The predestination being that he was going to manifest himself in flesh in order to redeem, to purchase to pay the price, the penalty, for humanity's sin once and for all time. He chose to redeem. And so Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So it is in redemption. The sacrifice that was needed, none of us could provide because we are all sinners. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And the lamb was provided. It came. When the Lord came as this only begotten Son, God manifest in flesh. So John the Baptist has pointed to this one walking by, this Jesus. Christ and has said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world so now we have a connection between what John declared and what is happening here in Acts chapter 2 be baptized each one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins this is the first time that the words Jesus Christ are used as a personal designation. The personal name of God is Jesus. The official word Christ refers to the Messiah. The Messiah is an office. It is a position. It is the anointed one. 
It is the one who breaks the yoke. With that declaration, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. There is given a declaration of revelation regarding the name of the God of the Old Testament. It was by this name that this group would experience him. It was by this name that they would be, it was for this name that they would be accosted. It was his name for which people would be persecuted and put to death. And it is by that name that we can rely on him. Okay? Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Oh, when you were baptized in Jesus' name, something happened more than getting wet, but you took to yourself this Lamb of God. You accepted and brought into your world this once and for all time sacrifice for humanity. You linked your sinful nature with his perfect nature and his perfection addresses my imperfection. If you've not yet been baptized, oh, why don't you come see us Sunday? We'd love to baptize you. I want you to repent first because as I'm about to show you, those two things work together. Baptism's a regular thing in the book of Acts. They didn't put it off till some bit baptism Sunday. I think I've got a problem with that. It's common. Read about it here in Acts 2 and then Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts 19. Ethiopian eunuch and an evangelist were riding out across the desert and the evangelist Philip had preached to him about Christ and had uh, Ethiopian eunuch spies water out in that desert. Here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Well, th that was not a public affirmation of his belief. It's just two of them there together. Yet he wanted to be baptized significant. Acts 19, people who had been baptized unto John's baptism were rebaptized. When the crowd at Cornelius' house received the Holy Ghost, and we'll talk about why sometimes people receive the Holy Ghost before they're baptized later in the book of Acts, but when they'd received the Holy Ghost, Peter asked the question then, and so it must have been an important thing. He asked, can anyone forbid water? that these not be baptized, they, they've received the Holy Ghost just like we did. And the next part of this, I, th I think, is important. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Repentance and being baptized in Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, go together. And they should not be separated. The activity that Peter called for includes both actions. It is a two part action to accomplish one outcome. So, Repentance alone does not address past sin and the future, nor does baptism alone address past sin and the future. It takes both repentance and baptism. For this group of people being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ was going to declare their acceptance of Jesus 
they were going to see that Christ was this one who would address their sin, that this was how they were going to deal with, and God was going to help them deal with the mistake of their having crucified their own Messiah. Now, your sin is not the same as theirs, but it's still sin, and sin is sin, is sin, is sin, and if this remedy that was given to them, what shall we do, worked for them, then it will work for your dishonesty, and it will work for your immorality. So our baptism in the name of Jesus Christ does exactly the same. It's, it's a mistake for us to link the phrase for the remission of your sins to baptism alone. Repentance and baptism work together. Don't exclude repentance from this process. The physical act of being baptized in water by immersion in the name of Jesus Christ has no value if there is not true repentance connected to it. And the mention of baptism in the verse, again, I, I reiterate, I emphasize, I underline, I highlight, it is in response to the question, what shall we do? So here's something for you to think about. A repudiation of baptism by me would be for me to repudiate Christ and all of the gifts that are associated with him being the Messiah. Just, just Google, just look it up. All of the things that the Messiah, the anointed one, the Christ, brings, all that he makes available. To not be baptized, to not lay hold to that. So this is this this is important. Every one of you, each person among you, that makes repentance and baptism this two parts. It makes them of universal importance. Every one. Every one. No matter how sinful or how godly. Repent and be baptized. Remember who it was that Peter was preaching this to. These were devout men. They were knowledgeable. Repent and be baptized. All of you devout men, you've come to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost, but while you're here, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the washing away, for the addressing of of your sin. No matter what position you have. Later in the book of Acts, we're going to see that many priests receive the gospel. No matter what position a person has, there's one door and there's only one that is open to all. The answer to our question remains. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Let me use one more illustration to see if I can't drive home this two-part thing. Baptism is inside the same circle as repentance. And the person who steps inside the circle of baptism in Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ and the circle of repentance so you have repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ inside the circle the person who steps inside that circle and experiences both of those things repentance and about face in regard to sin and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, that person experiences the remission of sins. One foot in the circle does not accomplish this. 
say, well, I tell you what, I think I'll just take that re repentance part. Doesn't remit sins. Well, I think I'll just take the baptism part. Well, that doesn't remit sins either. So the gift of remission of sins, the washing away the stain of our sin, the removal of the stain of our sin, makes baptism an essential part of my response to the gospel. Jesus Christ. And remission of sins, and again, I'll let you look up definitions, but our past sin is dealt with forever. The guilt doesn't remain because sin, guilt, they, they, they are one. When our sin's gone, our guilt is gone. If you have not yet repented, if you have not yet been baptized, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen at some point. Here we go. If you have not yet been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, why don't you come Sunday, 2635 West Nichols. We would love to baptize you in the name of Jesus. We'd love to guide you in the process of repentance. I intended to do it yesterday, but it got away from me, so I didn't do it. I want to pray what would seem to be a prayer of repentance for you and show you, to give you the sound. And your words don't have to be my words. And it's more than words, it's your behavior. You may need to go and gather up all your cigarettes and throw them away. They need to empty the liquor cabinets. The drugs that you've got stashed somewhere there in your house, those may need to be flushed. Actions, actions, actions. You may be in an immoral relationship where you have to decide are we meant to marry or should we go our separate ways? You see, repentance, repentance is not just, well, I decided I'm going to go to church. Repentance involves change in the course of your life making some right choices and right decisions. So let me show you what it would sound like. Jesus, this is Carlton. I thank you for dealing with my heart. I'm sorry for my sin and I don't like living the way I've lived. Forgive me, Lord, of the things that I've done that are, that are wrong. I don't want to do those further. I turn my back on them. I leave them behind. Help me, God, to break habits that have been part of my life. Let me be right in your sight. As I start down this road of giving myself to you, show me things I do that are not pleasing because Jesus I really want to please you help me Jesus help me to fully repent I want you in my life I want you to wash me clean of my sin and Lord you promised that I'd receive the gift of the Holy Ghost too. And Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I repent before you in Jesus' name. And when you have repented, then you begin to praise him. God, I thank you for hearing my prayer of repentance. I thank you for being a forgiving God. I thank you for your willingness to draw me to you. And he dwells in the praise of his people. Actually, the psalm said he dwells in the praise of Israel. The principle, I think, still works. 
You're praising Him for what He's doing in your life. And so often, people receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Just right there in that simple moment of beginning to praise God for the opportunity to repent. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing? Men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a great day to be in God's church. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll talk tomorrow about the promise ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. It's a great day. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you today for the audience. Lord, there are people who even now have begun to repent as they've listened to what has been taught. Lord, would you guide their steps? Let them become more, O oh Lord, than converts. Let them become great, grand disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put the power of the Holy Ghost in them. Reach them with your glory. I praise you. I give glory to your name. I exalt you today. I celebrate you. Lord, as we continue to work at 26, as we continue to work at the new address on North uh, Park, protect us, bless your people. Let us have some financial miracles that will help with equipment and some other things that we'd like to get done around there to make it where you don't have to go through the gymnasium to get to the church auditorium. But God, you got it. It's your church. You brought us this far. You're going to take us the rest of the way. I appreciate your goodness. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. All God's people say amen. Hey, if you'd like to have a home Bible study taught by one of our capable and qualified teachers, if you'll send a note, we'll see what we can do to connect you with someone who can help. God bless.